In 2013, your dad passed away. He did. My my condolences. My dad passed away as well. Thank you. I, I can imagine, you know, what you guys went through. And he left a bunch of works uh, to the both of you. And you guys took over the estate at we that did. point. Uh, you said something. I said, you said, uh, I think there was a time where I kind of wished uh, our father did what they did in the movies. Like, sit us down with a whiteboard and say, this is everything. It didn't quite happen that way. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, I think that they were a lot more prepared than maybe we thought we would be. I said that, yeah. yeah. So you guys now took over the estate. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you guys were working corporate jobs and, you mm -hmm. know, the private sector and so forth. So suddenly you have this multi-billion dollar estate. <laughs> that you now are taking over. How daunting was that to step into that? Uh, it's it's funny. Um, I don't know if I, the word daunting, I don't know if that is what I would call it. Um, Basquiat's always ra rise to the occasion. You know, we were always taught that, um, you know, you're handed something and you, and you dive, you know, deep dive into it. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what, uh, how Lisan and I approached it. And every decision that we made, we really tried to take Jean Michel into consideration and, you know, ha you know, try to think of him being in the room and would this be okay? Of course, it was overwhelming having our own private lives, but um, once we kind of, we knew that there were a lot of things potentially for us to do, exhibitions and so on and so forth, but we knew that we needed to get our sea legs under us first before we started adding other things on our plate. So I think that we are in a good groove now and it's what inspired us to decide that we wanted to do this exhibition, quite frankly. And I think the other part of it, I'm just gonna say it, we were born Basquiat's. And so for us, if we were overly focused on the money aspect of it, if we were overly focused on that, it would be very difficult for us to accomplish the things that we're able to accomplish for Jean-Michel's legacy. Mm -hmm. Again, for us, it's not, we're not tripping on Basquiat. We are Basquiat's, we're doing the thing that feels mm -hmm. right to us, but we're not taking ourselves as Basquiat's that seriously, because that's not the thing, right? And it, for me personally, it would distract me. If I was like, well, I'm a Basquiat, so blah, blah, blah. Like, mm -hmm. that's not the conversation. Mm -hmm managing this estate together. We're making the decisions that we believe are the right decisions. Uh, we have Jean-Michel in mind when we're doing it. We have everything that we've learned, you know, from our dad, from Jean-Michel, from our mom. Our mom also passed away in yep. 2008. My um, thank you. And, uh, and that's really where our head is at because that is the way that we're able to, um, to create the things that we're able to create and to share Jean-Michel's legacy with the world is by staying very, very focused. And, and I'm saying that really more to people who have this idea that like, you know, because you're managing this estate and because the value of Jean-Michel's works is what it is, um, that somehow or, or another, we're just kind of like, you know, sitting back somewhere having mimosas. Are we drinking mimosas? Maybe. <laughs> but we're doing it while we're working. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we work really, really hard really, really hard. And I have other businesses and she has other things. And, you know, we're, this is a big thing. We're very aware of and humbled by the enormity of Jean-Michel's presence within popular culture. Very clear on that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, also very clear that there is a, a long game here. Well, in 2017, Basquiat's skull sold for 110500000 at Sotheby's making the sixth most expensive sale ever at that time. I'm sure if that skull came up at auction again, it'd probably be about 250 million, if not more. In 2021, uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z did a Tiffany campaign with uh, Basquiat's painting, uh, Equals Pie, mm -hmm. in the background. Is that something you guys uh, authorized? Well, they do have to get copyright from exactly, us. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So that was something you guys were personally involved in. We were asked for, you You mentioned it earlier in the interview about, you know, there are certain protocols in business. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, people are like, oh, it's just painted. There's things that you do uh, to protect your trademarks and your copyrights. And 
the rights, you know, Jean Michel's rights as a as an artist. That's really what our role is. Mm -hmm. It's to protect his rights. And so we uh, we did give permission. We absolutely approve that. Um, yeah. Some of the critics say that th they had a problem with that because they didn't feel that he would endorse a luxury brand like Tiffany. Really? You mean the man who wore Armani and who walked Comme de Garçon <laughs> in Paris and Fair who enough. drank sake and who, <laughs> is that the person that Fair they, enough. oh, what would he be doing? There I, you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. I love that answer. So then we get to where we are today, which is the King Pleasure exhibit. Why that name King Pleasure? The name King Pleasure because King Pleasure was a bebop singer. Um, artist, and um, he sang the song uh, Moody's Mood for Love. Mm. Jean-Michel drew a painting um, called King Pleasure. Okay. And Moody's Mood for Love is a song that um, we listen to every night. Frankie Crocker ended his, of, of WBLS, ended his set playing that record. And um, it was something that we heard every night with our dad. Our dad loved the song. We love the song. Um, so just kind of the combination of the name of the artist, the fact that Jean-Michel created that painting, you know, the, the song that we, you know, grew up listening to, uh, Jean-Michel, his crown, um, King, it just seemed really, really appropriate for, um, you know, for, for Jean-Michel and how he uh, chose to live his, his life. And Jean-Michel also, he, he had fun. Like he painted 24-7, 365, mm -hmm. but he also really enjoyed his life. He, he loved music, he loved to party, he loved food, great food, he loved to travel. And so he really enjoyed he really enjoyed his life. Mm -hmm. Pleasure was important to him. And all of these pieces all come from the state, from your personal collection, except yes. for uh, one piece that your stepmom, which was the last piece that he actually painted, right? That's on, on loan for this uh, exhibit. She's our stepmother. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. she's I our know family. it's all in the family. She's, yeah. it, she's our stepmom. Exactly. Yeah. So all of the works, there are no loans no, from exactly. outside of the family. Uh, yeah. yeah. And none of these are for sale. Th no. These are all just for, this is all part of your permanent collection Correct. that's up on display. And as I walk around here, this is literally like a multi-billion dollar collection that I'm, I'm looking at. It, it's just jaw dropping. I didn't know a lot of these pieces even existed. You know, as a, a Basquiat fan, my whole, you know, not my whole life, but good portion of my life, my jaw is just dropping, walking around, seeing this stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was the intention. Um, you know, our stepmother said, we have all these works, they should be seen. And we agreed with her. Yeah. And um, we'd never curated a show before, but we had a particular vision. We knew what we wanted to share. We knew the stories we wanted to share. And what we wanted people to feel. To feel, yeah. Um, we wanted people to um, have an experience mm -hmm. as opposed to the typical gallery experience. And so um, we thought it was important to show the work. Yeah. We're very proud of this project that we've done. We, you know, have worked, we've made room in our lives for this. Uh, we do have sponsors for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we executive produced, we're self-funded for this. And we've kept the price point for tickets as low as we possibly could. But uh, but we're out of you know we're paying this out of our our pockets and so we oftentimes get people who are like why can't you just do it for free and it's like well it costs you know yes you can talk about the value of the paintings but we have a staff we are paying rent yeah, we're course. you know <laughs> buying Windex to clean the floor <laughs> <laughs> you know like it's it's not like we have this like foundation somewhere that's you know, doing this for us where we can offer tickets for free. We just, we can't do that. And so what's for sale are the tickets, right. uh, but the works are not for sale. That's not, that's not what this is about. This is about uh, creating an experience for those folks who may feel intimidated by walking into a museum or walking into a white wall gallery to see artwork. We wanted to create something where families 
would feel comfortable coming in, you know, enjoying the work, having the opportunity to, you know, get go in and out of galleries, sit outside, process the experience. For those who have a lot of questions about Jean-Michel and how he lived and what he did, we recreated our childhood, two rooms of our childhood That, that was incredible, by the way. Seeing, Thank you. Seeing the, yeah. the living room and, yeah. the, and the dining room. And, and this is where 90, you guys grew 95 up. 95% of what's in those two rooms is actually the stuff from our home. Was that chilling? Like actually walking by your old <laughs> it's fun. It's fun, childhood, childhood yeah. living room? Like, yeah. As we were putting this together, yeah. like toward the latter part of it, Jenny and I would like sit on the couch. It's not the original couch. The upholstery is redone. Right. Uh, and we would just sit on the couch, that table was in our living room and we just kind of sit there and talk or whatever. Uh, and we wanted to create this experience where people could come in, experience Jean Michel, get some inspiration. Uh, also for families to understand that a creative support creative people uh, in May, they may be doing something different from what uh, is expected, but support them. Uh, and so there's a lot. And see themselves. And see themselves in, it, in, yeah. in our family. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was talking to one of your team members as he was showing me around. Uh, he was saying that uh, the, the Warhol piece that uh, Andy Warhol did of your brother, mm -hmm. you guys actually purchased that yourself. No. Nope. It's not true? Purchased no. it? No. No? no. Oh, okay. Was that was that part of the collection already? Yep. Yeah. Aha. So were there any plans at all to like purchase any of the Bas Basquiat's that have been in circulation and to bring them kind of into the master collection or you guys are just good with what you have? I think I we're good with what I, we I, have we're for now. Like we're okay. not on a, on the hunt to find them or anything like that. I mean, who knows what happens in life, but okay. that's not part of our strategic plan. And any plans of actually selling off any of the pieces or do you try to keep everything? No. If amazing. you have followed our family for decades, we're not, you know, no. So what's next? I mean, this exhibit is incredible. Um, we're starting to see, you know, like the, the Tiffany's campaign I thought was really dope. I'm not one of the people who criticized it, by the way. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool. I, and, I, and in fact, when I see Jay-Z, the first thing I think is, oh, he's kind of fashioning his look after your brother. <laughs> I'll say it if no one else says That's it. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> to people see him in the campaign, it. you know, it was like, oh, okay, I, I see where this is going. Yeah. What's next for us is yeah. six months of rest. <laughs> six months of rest. <laughs> Vacation. What's next for us is, oh, what are you doing while you're not on a Zoom call about the exhibition? What's next is, you know, just, you know, there. this has been uh, an incredibly cathartic, healing, fun, um, challenging, and beautiful experience. And we have been knee deep in this while also juggling and managing the other parts of our lives since uh, the summer of 2020, mm. every day, every day. And it has been, uh, I think we make it look easier uh, than it actually is. And that we started this um, during the summer where the world was like off its axle. Mm. And so we never really processed that. We've just been going. And so for us, you know, uh, January 1st is the last day that the this exhibition will be up. We are not playing. Well, okay? It was extended. Wasn't it supposed it to be October extended. 15th? It was October 15th. Right. We extended it. So January 1st is the last and day. It. And that's, that's it. it. <laughs> that is it. We're packing it all if up. If you don't believe back it. Back in the warehouses. <laughs> yes. yes. Exactly. And then we're going to take a minute to, um, to rest and to refuel and to, you know, uh, focus on whatever it is and to, um, you know, to recharge and to also process this experience. It has been beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. And when we're ready to, you we'll know, figure it out. We'll, we'll what the next step is, we will let our supporters, our followers know. Yeah, sure. Do you guys each have a favorite piece? Is there like one painting in particular that's like oh, that? Every that's, day, that's every day there's a different it's, one. Yeah. Oh, really? Just every kind day of, there's yeah. a different one. I like this today. This morning I'm thinking about, um, Hot water, no hot water, Asanin. I never get the name of it completely, but it's almost like a family tree. It's in the 1960 gallery, mm -hmm. and it's a drawing, a very simple drawing, but it's Jean Michel almost drawing out our family tree, mm -hmm. uh, both sides of the family. And uh, it just reminds me of like hydrants 
water hydrants in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and uh, it reminds me of when we were younger. Yeah. Oh. I'd say for me today mm-hmm. would be another drawing in the same within the same gallery, um, and it's very simple. It's a Vidagua oh, cart. Wow. Vidagua is kind of like a snow cone in a lot of Hispanic communities, oh, right. and it's shaved ice, and they put flavored um, syrup so, on it. Yeah. It's all and, sugar. Um, it is sugar. <laughs> right. it's all sugar. And it's something that we had in, in when we lived in New York, as well as when we lived in Puerto Rico. It'd be like the Spanish version of an Italian ice, I guess, right. you know, yeah. Well, thank you so much thank you. Uh, for sharing your story. I've been a long, long time fan. And the thing about Basquiat is that when you look at it, there, there's no confusing as to who that, who yeah. drew that. Yeah. It, it's so unique and it's so different that, you know, I remember watching documentaries and the art dealers were like, yeah, as soon as we put it up, it wasn't hard to sell. Everyone wanted them, <laughs> you know, just right off the bat. It's not something yeah. you have to ease into or yeah. have to see a thousand times in order to like. As soon as you saw it, it was just so drastically different than any other art piece out there. Yeah. And... You know, it's influenced so many people to this day. You see so many baby Basquiat's, you know, and I'm not going to name any names, but yeah. you see so many these days and mm-hmm. people like to call it street art or whatever else. But your brother was the originator of all this. Mm-hmm. And when you look at these pieces, you it just reinforces how much of a genius he was and how much work he had. Because yeah. as I walk around, you know, like the pieces in this room I've never seen before. Mm. You know, a few pieces as I walk, oh, okay, I've seen I've seen a print of this. Oh, I've seen this before. No, but 90% of it is, is brand new. So thank you so much for digging into the warehouse and pulling this out and, and showing it to people because I think it's going to have such an effect. And, you know, and your brother, you know, in terms of African-American painters, he, he not only broke the, the glass ceiling, but he shattered it and went off into space yeah. yes. with it. And, you know, I know that so many kids, you know, that didn't think that this could be a real career. They're just doodling in their rooms and thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to do this for fun. But then my dad wants me to go get a college degree and Mm -hmm. do computers. They see your brother and say, no, I could actually follow my dreams and become embraced and, and, and to support myself. Because being a working painter is probably in the arts, probably the hardest genre to you know to really make a living Mm -hmm. and unfortunately you get you know everyone loves you after you pass away suddenly your your works triple quadruple ten times in price which makes it even harder right in the genre and the supplies are expensive right you know so it's it's not easy it's not easy yeah i think also one of the things about jean michel that was so unique is that he had that mix of creative genius and also business acumen, Mm. because I think that's what's really important as well. Unfortunately, a lot of times people who are, you know, creative, they're like, well, I'm just creative and I don't want to focus on the business, which is fine. Uh, But I think that that was one of the things that really helped him um, is that he had the balance of both. There was, you know, he was strategic about what he was doing. And he also um, worked really hard you know right i mean your collection have you ever counted the number of paintings that you nope. guys have no nope. we're not talking about no that. idea we're not discussing that <laughs> a lot though. we're not discussing a lot. it a lot. Not, vlad uh, listen I, I i'm just in awe <laughs> i'm just in awe and i'm a fan this is why i'm saying it like I, i'm interested to Thank see you. how many more pieces will at one point be displayed that i could enjoy because because these are amazing i remember being at russell simmons old house and he had um one of the originals of the the, the Basquiat Warhol mm-hmm. collab, the one mm-hmm. with the horse, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? There were a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. I, which I remember walking by, he had it like in the, in the stairway so no sunlight would, would touch it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I, I walked by and I'm like, was that Basquiat? What? <laughs> <laughs> Where am I right now? <laughs> but, you know, you have so many, so many fans uh, of your brother's work. And thank you so much for displaying it. Uh, I, I love this exhibit and I want everyone to come see it before January. There was a time when I used to be, I used to feel like, uh, I'd be a little bit like they're copying Jean Michel, and I'd be all like, oh. <laughs> but now I see it differently, you know, where it's like it's yeah. there are a lot of. I'm not talking about copying Jean Michel's work, but to be inspired by it. It's really overwhelmingly beautiful to see how many artists are inspired by him, and you can kind of see him 
you know, coming through them or, or the fact that he inspired them coming yeah. through into their work. I think it's really beautiful. He I did agree. a great thing. He I did agree. a great thing. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Looking forward to what you guys have in the future. You're welcome. Thank Take you. Care. You're welcome. Peace.